Is yeah, oh no, it's very good. We can hear you well, and everything is fine. So this is going to be the outline of our discussion this afternoon. Uh, kindly note that after an hour, almost by four, I will request Dr. Amir to allow us have a short break. Uh, so by four, if Dr. Amir agrees, then we'll go for a short break. Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course, we can do so. Yeah. So, I'm going to start by looking at project management areas and how blockchain could enhance or uh, provide a, a, a increased efficiency and perhaps reduce this issue confronting the construction industry. So this is what I'm going to start with. Rather than jumping into blockchain itself, why not just start with the main focus of our discussion, which is the link of the application of blockchain into project management. And perhaps uh, one of the focus could be the methodology, but for now we are going to look at the application of blockchain through or in the context of the project management knowledge areas. Then thereafter, I will be talking about project participants and how blockchain could increase the connectivity or enhance the sharing of uh, information among these participants. Then we will begin with a scenario and uh, progress into blockchain environment. Then we'll look at some terminologies that uh, are common while discussing blockchain. So next we'll be looking at blockchain in the construction industry. Then we cannot discuss blockchain without discussing smart contract because this is one uh, component of blockchain. And at the end we will see uh, future of uh, or features of blockchain. Perhaps this is going to be abstract without seeing any aspect of blockchain. So the last will be a link. If you have access or not, I will uh, use the link and show us some of the features of our blockchain. At least we have some glimpse of how it looks like. Are we familiar with this? 10 knowledge areas? I think many of the students, yes. yes. Okay, so let's start with integration. Now, this slide is uh, looking at how blockchain fits into these knowledge areas. We start with integration. If we are discussing or if we are looking at integration, one important component is change management. Let's say we are in the blockchain environment and there is need for change. The project manager has received or has uh, accept the need for the change. Now, one important aspect or contribution of blockchain will be all the members in the network will be aware of the need for the change, what will be the change, and perhaps when the change has taken place. So everybody will be informed about the change in the project. Moving to scope management, if we want to simplify scope or define scope in the simplest definition, we'll be looking at the number of activities required to be completed before that project is considered uh, over. Then, because we are in blockchain environment, perhaps everybody will be aware of what are the number of activities that must be completed to consider this project completed. Then in terms of time management, this is uh, where blockchain is very important because we are familiar with uh, project delay, cost overrun. Now, if subcontractor, for example, or whatever information is related to project term is being shared to all the network or members in the network, perhaps this will help 
reduce the issue of uh, uh, time overrun of a project. The same thing applies to cost. Perhaps we do know that not all information might be circulated in the network, but the relevant information that every member of the network should be aware of will be circulated in the network. Uh, sorry, we may not comprehend how blockchain look like or how it works, but then I feel it is better to start with this, looking at the linkage of uh, the blockchain into all these knowledge areas. Now, quality. We do know how important quality is to a project. Now, if every member of the network in a blockchain environment is aware of the quality requirement, be it uh, CIDB, for example, be it the client, be it the relevant authority. Now, as much as the required quality is circulated, everybody is aware of the required quality standard. Uh, I think it will be difficult for the contractor to reduce the required quality in any case, because everybody knows this is what we want to achieve in terms of quality. Human resources. Uh, the project manager will have to uh, assemble the project team. He need to train the project team. He need to motivate the project team. Now, in this context, in this environment, it is not going to be his responsibility alone because everybody in the network knows who are the participants in this project and that will help the project manager in managing the project teams. Communication is also important. In fact, uh, the blockchain will solve a lot of obstacles regarding communication because there will be no need to send in separate information, particularly to the stakeholders, because every piece of information will be shared at the same times and on the same uh, platform. So communication will be circulated. Everybody will be at the same level as far as the information is intended to be circulated. Uh, let me dwell more on the risk management because if uh, a project is facing risk, we do know it will be very difficult to achieve the project objectives. We, in the general uh, risk management process, we need to plan for the risk. Now, during the planning, all members in the network will be aware of what or how the project team intend to manage the project risk. Then in terms of identification, once a number of risks have been identified by the team, all those in the network will be aware of the potential risk, potential risk, and therefore it will be at the advantage of the uh, project manager and his team because all members in the network, be, uh, be it the regulatory body, be it the client side, the financial uh, institution, can assist the project team because they have identified the potential risk by the project team. So procurement, we know uh, for a big size project might require importation of uh, some machineries, equipment. Now this involves a lot of uh, issues. One is currency fluctuation, Two is shipping, supply delay. A lot of issue is connected to procurement, especially importing uh, building materials. Now in blockchain environment, most of this issue will be addressed because the movement of this good and services will be known by every member in the network. In terms of uh, currency, should not be an issue because the financial institution will be in this network and they'll be aware of the in fact there will be no need for uh, a remarkable exchange of currency because if 
if financial institution is part of the network, they will be aware of the required currency that is to be used in the importation of this goods. So a lot of issues will be addressed regarding procurement. Now, the stakeholders, if we want the project to be successfully completed without hindrance, with a full commitment and support from stakeholders, there will be a need for efficient and timely communication. So in the blockchain environment, this will be reduced significantly, meaning the, uh, the barriers to this effective and efficient communication with the stakeholders will be reduced significantly because they are part of the blockchain. And whatever piece of information is appended into the block will be automatically be in their own uh, computers. So they are part of the network. They receive the same piece of information as others. So this is uh, what I want to say about the linkage between blockchain or the contribution which blockchain can offer to project management in the context of uh, project management knowledge areas. So this is uh, dependent on the procurement system. This is one of the structure, organizational structure we could have for a project. Now, the missing link is many here because there is no complete connectivity. When I say complete connectivity, we could see the linkage between the client, the project manager, the head contractor and subcontractor is one. So rather than this type of uh, connectivity, why not have this? Now, this is a blockchain environment. Every member is connected. So there is no piece of information that will be shared and one party will not be informed. So completely, it's a complete network. And this perhaps will help or address a lot of issues facing the construction uh, project. Now, this is the scenario I want to look at. Rather than uh, defining blockchain, why not we progress based on this scenario? I will use myself as an example. Now, if, uh, of course, between two parties or two people, one offering a service, whoever is uh, rendering the service is going to be paid. So in this case, I will use myself as the sender of the letter from the left hand side can you see that on the right hand side is the client who is being served who received the service so i am writing a letter to my client requesting for payment in this scenario there is no blockchain yet we are not we have not advanced into blockchain yet so perhaps one of the means of writing will be to get a piece of paper, uh, address, after salutation, address whatever I want to request. But in this case, it's payment, of course. I want to request payment from the client. Now, one of the means of sending this mail will be through post office. So I drop my letter into the uh, community or street box. Then the post office will send a vehicle to take all these uh, mails for dispatch. But there, is no, there are numbers of questions that we might or I will be uh, or that might be in my mind. One is how do I know that my letter has uh, been delivered? And when was it delivered to the client? Because it is about payment. I want to receive my payment. I have written a letter and I want to be sure he received the letter and perhaps when he received the letter. This is one. There are options. I could give him a call, but what if he says he has not received the letter just because it is about payment? He is not ready to pay and he might say, I have not received your letter. The next option is I need to ask the post office. But then, who am I going to ask in the post office? The next option is I will have to 
asks one of the mail carrier, how do I know which of the mail carrier pick my letter and deliver my letter? These are the questions that might be bothering me. Which mail carrier should I ask? I wouldn't know practically because there are numbers of uh, mail carriers. Please, this scenario will be understood when we are discussing blockchain. Now, this mail carrier who delivered my letter is called a node. Sorry, it's called a miner. We will see his function and why he's called a miner later while we are discussing a blockchain. So take note. This very uh, mail carrier is called a miner. And because he needs to solve a puzzle to be able to be this, uh, to be choose as the mail carrier that is going to deliver my letter. We will discuss that uh, subsequently. So in the blockchain environment, now we, are, we have uh, advanced into blockchain environment. In order to decide or identify the mail carrier that delivered my letter, there are different mechanisms, which is called proof of work. In proof of work, which is one of the mechanism, and of course the most common mechanism for choosing the miner who is going to uh, append the information or transaction into the block, then subsequently add the block into the chain of blocks. In this case, the mail carrier which we use during the post office scenario, in the blockchain scenario, all these members are miners. So miners are responsible for ensuring that the information that is coming in is correct. He will now share this information to the remaining miners in the network. But then the question is, who is going to mine the information coming in? Sorry, uh, who is going to mine a new block? The essence is to mine a new block, meaning uh, develop a new block. Develop in the sense that appending the information that has been that is coming in into a new block, then subsequently add it to existing blocks. So that process is called mining. The question now is who is going to be selected? There are different mechanisms. The common one I have mentioned is proof of work. So each of these miners will be given the same mathematical puzzle. In this case, we use Sudoku uh, game, but usually it is mathematical puzzle. The first person that solve this puzzle will be the miner that is going to append the information into the block. So this is the miner that has, uh, that has been identified, number one, is now the mail carrier that delivered my letter. So we have successfully identified the mail carrier that delivered my letter, but that is not the end of the issue. Which mail carrier can I ask? I have identified that. That uh, question has been addressed. But then, can we say, is that all? No, because my client can be a dubious client. Now, having received my letter requesting for 100 uh, RM, for example, he might decide to duplicate another letter stating that I have requested or we have agreed on 50 RM. So this is another issue which blockchain addresses very clearly. So fraud is significantly reduced when we are in blockchain environment. How do we identify which of these two letters is the original letter sent by me or by the sender? This is how it works. While I was writing my letter, I need to form or create a code. And this is a long list of uh, alphabet and numbers. 
attached to this letter, the moment you change, in fact, because it is a digital copy, the moment you uh, you can see any of this alphabet or word in the letter, the moment you use your cursor, as we shall see, the moment you change anything, this code will change along with it. So it is very difficult to change the content of this letter. And how do the miners identify which of these letters is original? This is how they do. They will match the content of, because the moment you try to change the content of the mail or letter or data or transaction, the code will also change. So this is how you will identify which of the letter is original letter. So this is one of the benefits we can derive in blockchain environment when we uh, implement blockchain technology into our project. So we are now uh, progressing into a simple definition of what blockchain is. There are numbers of definitions you can get from the net but regardless of how it is defined, there are some important key features of uh, blockchain. Number one, it is about a ledger, but not the traditional ledger we know. It is a digital ledger. And what does ledger means? It is meant for recording transaction, recording information, recording data. So, second is, once this has been recorded into the block, it can be duplicated into the number of persons or participants in the network. And therefore, the same piece of information will be distributed across the entire network, of course, using computer system. So, this is a typical definition of uh, or feature of a blockchain. So we use it to record information. One, of course, digital information or digital data. Then it has to be duplicated because it is not about one or one man show. It is a connection or connect, connected. Or, uh, sorry, it is a network of uh, consisting of a numbers of uh, nodes. Nodes are the participant in the network of blockchain. So. The same information is passed across at the same time and at the same quality or quantity. And therefore, it is very difficult to change this information because there is a process called consensus. It's meant to check that the information coming in is right and it is valid. And once it is appended into the block by a miner, it is really almost difficult to change the information. How? The information in block one, for example, the first block is usually called Genesis block. Block one is Genesis block. Whatever information is in block one, which is Genesis block, will be in block two. Whatever information is in block two, knowing that block two contains the information of block one and block two, will be in block three. So by extension, block three contains the information of block one and block two and the block three itself. So tempering with block one will not erase the information because it is there in block two, it is there in block three. So this is how it is very difficult to change the information in the blockchain as long as it has been appended into the block and the block has been connected or attached to the existing blocks. Uh, Consensus. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yes. may I ask a question? Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, you mentioned about that uh, it is the duplication of the, uh, any document we have, there is a duplication for any member. Does it mean that each member received that uh, document with different code? No, 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 no. It will be broadcasted. Sorry, I think that should be the right word. 
So okay. once, yeah, once the miner mm -hmm. have solved the puzzle and have been decided to be the person to, I mean, the person to add the information into the block, he's before he before he proceed into adding into the block, he need to send it to other uh, miners to validate this information. So once it is validated, it will be added to the block and it will be broadcasted among the network. Okay, thank you. Sorry very much. for using the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I have just said that the miner will have to send the same piece of information to the remaining miners for validation. So that process is consensus. All the miners have to agree on the same piece of information. And if for any reason, for any reason, there is no consensus, it means there is issue with that piece of information. So consensus mechanism is meant to make sure that whatever is to be appended into the blockchain is valid and secondly, it will not be used for double spending. We will uh, see what is double spending uh, shortly. Because we are in digital world, member of the uh, network, if for any chance, if for any reason is uh, dubious, can replicate a transaction, especially uh, financial related transaction. To, to avoid this, the consensus which is done by all the nodes and the miners is to ensure that the piece of information is the valid information and whichever information is found to be invalid will be automatically rejected and will not be appended into the blockchain. So these are those who are responsible for validating whatever information is coming in. So please, transaction here does not necessarily have to be financial transaction, no. It could be record of, uh, let's say, if we are looking at um, uh, construction itself, record of participant in the project could be a transaction. So transaction should not be literally looked at, uh, seen as the financial way of uh, transacting. It is beyond that in the context of our uh, blockchain. So miners try to avoid or prevent double spending. Token. If we transfer, I mean, if we transfer financial currency, electronic currency, usually called cryptocurrency, that is currency, but beyond that, there are other assets that could be transferred from one person to another. Example, exchange of or purchase of land, ownership of land, ownership of vehicle, or exchange of properties. Now, the unit of that property is known as a token. So, token is used to define the unit of possession of individual that is being exchanged between the parties. It could be sale of a house in the real estate uh, industry. Of course, you pay you, in the blockchain environment. You might not even know the person selling the house. You don't need to know him. The blockchain environment will allow you to purchase whatever you want to purchase without even getting in contact or knowing the person that owns the house or property. So that unit is considered as a token. Can we identify what is on this slide? A piece of a book that is meant for, that contains a record of transactions. We don't have to know which type of transaction it is, but as long as it is a record of whether it is a daily sales or transactions. Now, this is typically not as a ledger. Typically, it's not as a ledger. No, this helps us in understanding the concept of blockchain. 
we are also recording our information or data in a ledger. In this case, digitally. We are recording digitally and we are making sure the same piece of information is broadcasted in the network. But before then, we want to ensure whatever information is to be appended into the ledger is valid. We also want to make sure once we append this information into the blog, nobody can change it. For this paper uh, or booklet, ledger could be altered somehow. It is, yeah, it is, it can be altered to a large extent, but for blockchain it is People used to say, the expert used to say, almost impossible to do that because of the difficulty that is involved in doing that. I have mentioned that uh, an asset transfer on into or off the ledger is a transaction. So it is, it doesn't have to be the financial transaction. If we are recording a data into the blockchain, example, information of a participant in any project into the blockchain. Who is the project manager? Who are the uh, other parties contractor? Who are the suppliers? This is a transaction. The process of recording this, validating this information before appending into the blockchain is called transaction. I have mentioned earlier that we cannot discuss blockchain without discussing a uh, smart contract. Smart contract is one important component of uh, blockchain. Uh, we will see a, a typical example, or sorry, uh, a clear example uh, subsequently, but this is to introduce us to contract. Uh, we should be informed that we can execute contract within the blockchain environment, but then the term contract usually is confusing. In most cases, the term contract in the blockchain is the condition that must be met before uh, the transaction occurs. Example, let me use, I will come back a bit, please. Let me miss something. I'm looking for a vendor machine, but Probably it is later there. Are we familiar with vending machine? Dr. Amir? No, I'm not. You know it probably, uh, this machine that you could get your drink from, purchase your yeah, drink from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, now, rather than going to a kiosk, giving the sales guy money, telling him to bring or asking you to go and pick your drink. Now you are contracting with the machine. You have agreed that you are going to pay a certain sum of money and the agreement, you have agreed that once you pay, the machine should be able to dispense the drink. So, but then there must be condition that must met before you get your drink and that might be number one you need to select the type of drink number two you need to drop in the exact amount of coin those two conditions must be met before you get your drink so that is the contract in the context of smart contract so far can i proceed please yeah yeah very clear so coming back to notes in the blockchain network. Whoever is a participant in the blockchain, now in the project management environment or construction project environment, the project team could be a node because they might be needing just one point of computer. Now, uh, CIDB will be a node because they just need one point of computer. Ministry of Works, for example, the client, let's say if it is USM, they just need a point at the project office or physical uh, planning department. Uh, who's, the contractor also might just need a point. This 
individual point of a computer set managed by individual person is called a node. So once a piece of information is broadcasted, they will receive the same information at the same time. So these are the participants in the blockchain network. They are different from the miners. Miners are meant to ensure the accuracy, uh, fraudulence is uh, prevented, uh, fraud, sorry, fraud is prevented, and they proceed by appending the information into the block and connecting the new block into the existing block. Peer-to-peer -peer network. Okay, a project manager will be a peer to the contractor, contracting team or supplier team. Now, because it is, uh, okay, let me use the academic definition of peer-to-peer. -peer. We are familiar with peer review. <laughs> it is more than one person. Now it's involving two percent or more. So because ne the nature of blockchain network is more than one person. So that is the concept from which P2P network is uh, looking at. So it is about number of set of people connected by or connect, uh, in within the same network. So that is the concept of peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. Node number one is a peer to node number two, and he's connected to any other member of the network such that once one information is broadcasted, they will all receive the same piece of information. Of course, distributed ledger, the same information is broadcasted, so it is distributed to all uh, members of the network at the same time. We'll take some time to look at this uh, in detail. For a transaction to occur, the person that is initiating the transaction, we need to have two type of keys. One is the public key, two is his or her private key. In this case, we are looking at Alice and Bob. Bob is among the member of the network, meaning he's a node, he's one of the nodes in the network. So Alice want to send a piece of information let's say she's the project manager she want to pass uh, she want to send a report monthly report of the project into the blockchain so she will initiate uh, the process of sending the information of course she will uh, probably type the entire information into the space provided in the blog we shall see how it looks like subsequently during the future uh, when, I, when I'm showing you the future. So she need to uh, have two keys. One is public, one is private. She will share the public key with all other members of the network. So they will be able to use that public key to assess the information she has sent. But she also need her private key to do what? To create the hash. You remember the during the letter scenario, post post um, uh, mail scenario. There is a long set of numbers and uh, words. That is the hash. So she will use her private key to create this hash, and it is called digital signature. So what does Bob do now? Bob can use the alias public key which she has shared with him to validate the digital message sent by Alice. So once he confirmed, he also need to send this information to the other member of the network. So they cannot access that information without using the public key of Alice. So this is how uh, security is uh, enhanced in blockchain network. So once they verify that this piece of information is true, because they are in the context of project management, they have been uh, informed from day one what is happening in the project. They know every piece, uh, sorry, piece of information 
that is supposed to be known as far as the project is concerned. So they are in position to validate the information Alice is sending. And once they verify it is true, then Bob can go ahead, append this information, which is project report in this case, to a blog and subsequently connect it to existing blocks. Consensus mechanism and consensus algorithm, the difference is for us that are familiar with uh, the term algorithm is like a program. So this is the programming aspect of the machine, sorry, of the blockchain. The other one is mechanism, which method we want to use to reach consensus. But in this case, it is the programming itself that allow this to happen. So it is embedded in the blockchain uh, technology. Smart contract. We are going to look at one or two dimension or example of application of smart contract in this case. The first one is identification. Now, in the project management environment, we might disallow any member of the project team to come in without being identified for security purpose. So blockchain is relevant in this case. So the, the agreement is, I have mentioned earlier that the contract is the condition that must be met before the transaction take place. So in this case, the contract is you must show or identify your face probably by scanning whether scanning your face or using your thumb or whatever you want to use to identify yourself. This is one scenario or application. The second application of uh, smart contract is in terms of uh, manufacturing. So the agreement that or uh, the condition that must take place will be once you finish the product, notify me and your payment will be automatically triggered. You get paid instantly once it has been confirmed that the product is completed and in the good, good quality. So this is one typical example of a smart contract. In the context of construction industry, once valuation, are we familiar with valuation? The progress valuation of a contractor. We do pay contractor uh, based on the work they have done on site. Now, in the context of blockchain, usually in, in the traditional practice, he might have to wait for 14 days waiting for a lot of uh, documentation to happen. In the context of smart contract, once, once the project manager verify that the work has been done, his payment will be triggered automatically. So he doesn't have to wait for those 14 days of payment. Because it must have been agreed that once he finishes work, he's going to be paid. So the payment will be automatically triggered. So this will solve a lot of uh, adjudication, <laughs> complete delay, as we used to experience in the tra traditional or non-blockchain environment. So there are two main types of blockchain. One is public blockchain. The second is private blockchain. The difference is in the public blockchain, it is open for everybody, just like we can go to ATM machine and withdraw money. As long as we have the ATM card and we have uh, sufficient money in the bank. So it is open for public, that is uh, public blockchain. Now for private blockchain, it's meant for a specific uh, member of the network. Example, a network or a blockchain of banks alone, only banks could be considered as private blockchain because only banks will be in that network. But for blockchain such as Bitcoin blockchain, because it is financial, uh, open for financial transaction by anybody, so Bitcoin is a public blockchain. Ethereum is another type of blockchain. 
which is open for public. The difference is in Bitcoin, you can only transact finance, uh, financial uh, cryptocurrency, meaning uh, digital currency. In Ethereum, it's beyond that. You can transact more than financial uh, or cryptocurrency. You can transact asset, you can transact record, you can transact information in Ethereum blockchain. So this is how, okay, permission, permissionless is from the private and public uh, terms. Permissionless means you don't need to be permitted to be in the blockchain. Um, by extension, it is the public blockchain. While the permission blockchain is the private blockchain that requires you to be permitted to be a member of the network. Dr. Amir, can we continue? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's up to you. Up to you. If, you if you want to give a break, break, fine. Okay. If you want to continue. Uh, okay, maybe in the next five minutes. Okay. okay. So, we saw the hashing right from the mid scenario. It's a very lengthy combination of number and alphabet so but this slide is just telling us how or what are the features of this hashing that make it uh, be able to address security issue you could see one is it has to be deterministic meaning that a given input will always result in the same output once you if if you delete just one alphabet from the content of information, the entire hashing will change along with the deleting or with the deletion. So the more you change the content of information, the, the same way the hash will change. And therefore, it changes along with the content of the information. That is why it is very difficult to change the information itself. The next one I'll be looking at, small change input should result to a big random. So even though it changes as we change the information, but a little change in the input will result to a big change in the output of the hash. So this is some of the feature that make it more uh, effective in terms of preventing of uh, fraud or changing of a piece of information in the blockchain. So this is the proof of what I mentioned previously. How do we determine who is going to mine a block? Because if in the blockchain environment, if one person consistently mining a block, it might not be healthy. So there are different mechanisms that are used to select who is going to mine a block. And this is one of the common uh, approach, which is called proof of work. So the same mathematical, complex mathematical uh, puzzle will be sent to all the nodes, uh, sorry, all the miners in the network. So whoever solved this mathematical puzzle first will be the one to mine the info, to mine the block, meaning uh, to append the information into the new block and connect it to the existing block. Why should that be competition? Because they are paid for every mining of new block. So miners are paid, and that is why there's this form of competition. Who is going to mine first, or who is going to be selected? So for fear, to be fair enough, I would prefer this because whoever does it first will have to do it. But then what if, what if the same person persistently solve this puzzle in most cases, so it could that is why there are other options of selecting who is going to mine a block. So this is uh, a cycle of uh, transaction. We saw how Alice intending to initiate a transaction. So let's position Alice as number one. 
So she will request a transaction. She intends to record or to sorry to uh, to key in the monthly report of the project so that all the stakeholders and all the members in the network will be updated on the progress of work. Therefore, the request is transmitted to the network. Here, the project manager uh, side, the client side, CIDB, the banks, the court of law, all who, whoever is in the network will have to get this information that somebody is uh, requesting to transact an information. So this is where the issue of mining will come. Who is going to append this information that Alice intended to put across? So we could stick to proof of work whereby the mathematical puzzle will have to be solved first before the person uh, is being chosen to mine a block. So the network will validate the transaction after the miner have uh, solved the mathematical puzzle and Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. So once, once the miner have uh, solved the puzzle, of course, that will position him to append the information into the block. But then, being a miner or being a chosen miner at that point in time does not guarantee him to go ahead and do that. He needs to request validation from all other members of the uh, miners. In fact, including the notes, the notes have to agree that this piece of information is correct. The miners have to agree that this is valid and it's not going to lead to double spending. So once this information is being agreed on consensus basis, then he will proceed. Otherwise, that information will be kicked out, will not be considered as a valid information. And then the miner who has been chosen will add the current information into the block as a transaction, then that block will be added to the chain of blocks and that will be considered as transaction completed. So this is the cycle that every piece of information uh, passes. I think we can stop here. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hamroudi. Uh, guys, we're going to have 30 minutes, half an hour break, and we will resume on 8.30.
I think we should wait for a couple of more minutes uh, to all the students to let the, all the students to join us. Second. And Dr. Kamaruddin, how is the COVID status in Emirates? Are you having any restriction, movement restrictions there? Yeah, we had for a few months, but uh, as uh, this, I think uh, late December, there was mm -hmm. uh, the, the movement uh, continues since late December, last year December. Ah, uh, I see. But then when the number keep rising, then we had to move to online teaching mm. again. Okay, so how is the numbers now? How many persons get infected daily? No, the number has drastically reduced because the vaccine is free and uh. the administration was effective. It was well planned. Okay, great to hear, to hear that. In Malaysia, we are having Dr. Ami, we can't hear you. You are on mute. Hi. Oh, now can you hear me? Yes, it's clear. Now. Okay, okay. I think someone uh, muted me, maybe. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> okay. Uh, shall we continue? Okay, thank you. So I welcome all of you back. Uh, this page is showing a non-blockchain non uh, environment. 
if you recall while I think on the first slide when I was relating blockchain and uh, knowledge areas, I wanted to specifically look at risk management in much more detail. Uh, we do know that the common practice or the common uh, process of uh, managing risk are six in numbers. I did mention of uh, the planning and the next is identification. So once risk has been identified and broadcast into the network, uh, all the members of the network will be aware and the next process will be analyzing those risks. So once they have been analyzed and evaluated, the probability and the impact identified and those risks that have been considered as high level risk have been uh, identified. So this information, once broadcasted, will help the participant to contribute in whatever aspect to minimize the impact of those risks on the project. So let's say a supplier related risk have been identified. So having identified supply or procurement related risk, so something have to be done because the supplier have identified, even if the supplying company have not take time to identify risk that associated with their supply or procurement. Now, the project team have done that and they have been informed that this is a potential risk. So it is now left for the supply company to at least address this potential risk as quick as possible. So this will minimize a lot of uh, issues uh, facing the construction project. In addition to analysis and evaluation, the next, of course, qualitative and uh, quantitative analysis. So there will be planning or there will be um, response strategy to each of those risks that have been identified. Now, let's say one of the response strategy is to ensure, because once it is about asset, the most likely response strategy will be to ensure a, pro uh, a property or uh, that belongs to the project. Now, insurance company will likely be in the network and they will assist uh, greatly in, the, in ensuring that the process is uh, done effectively and efficiently, rather than contracting with an insurance company outside the network. So having a blockchain network in project management will help in a great deal in addressing most of these uh, issues confronting the construction project and by extension painting the industry as an industry that uh, associated with uh, high level of accident, time related issue, uh, cost related issues. So this slide is a non blockchain environment compared to this. So we have the bank at one side. So banks will have the same piece of information. The construction, of course, the contractor himself, the supplier will have the same piece of information as I've mentioned in the context of risk management. Uh, we could see the auditors will have the same piece of information. Regulatory agency like CIDB will have the same piece of information. So this is going to be a collective work, a teamwork, assisting in the success, towards the success of the project. So it will not only rely on the project team to uh, manage some of these things. So collective effort will ensure a high level of success in project and minimize those issues I've mentioned facing the construction project. We can see some of the benefit we could derive having our project in blockchain environment. Uh, privacy, of course, uh, tempering of record, manipulation of record will be significantly minimized, if not com completely eradicated. So this is looking at procurement aspect of uh, construction project. This is a traditional way. We can look at it from bottom left. 
sorry, please. Bottom left, where the raw material uh, is being obtained and shipped all through. Now, in each of these process, there will be separate information by or owned by individual organization compared to this blockchain environment where the same piece of information will be broadcasted across the network and that will help a great deal in ensuring that procurement uh, time is uh, minimized, the, <coughs> the movement of uh, goods and services are being monitored Let's, sorry, I may have to digress a bit outside construction. Let's say we, in the current scenario, we want to import the vaccine and that is highly dependent on a significant or specific temperature. So in this blockchain uh, environment, once a carrier or a shipping company or a logistic company violates the temperature, all members in the network will be notified. And therefore, since he has violated the condition, he will not be paid. So this is one of the benefits we can derive from being a uh, application of blockchain in construction projects. So this is another benefit. Now we are looking at uh, KYC refers to know your customer. If contractor A has a number of issues with one bank, so he can not move to bank B to obtain a loan. Why? Because bank, sorry, please. <coughs> Why? Because bank ABC are in the same network. So this is going to be a private blockchain. All the information of the customer will be broadcasted, will be known by all this bank. So no customer will come, violate or have issue with one bank and go to the other bank to obtain a loan or obtain any service. So this is one of the benefits we can derive also from implementing blockchain in construction project. So a uh, smart contract, I have uh, mentioned the context or sorry, or the concept of the contract, which has to be the condition that must be made before the transaction takes place. So now why smart contract? In this case, the contract is not in a lengthy, wordy we used to have. It's going to be coded in the computer software. So, Whatever the contract is going to be, but it's not going to be the wording we used to have, the written, handwritten or typed uh, descriptive contract we used to have, is going to be in a sort of a computer code in this case. So supplier and the client, of course, will have a contract of supply of certain goods. Now, that agreement between these two parties will be in a coded form. So that is considered as a smart contract, such that once he supplies the goods, deliver to the site, the project manager or whoever is assigned to certify the quantity and the quality, the moment that has been certified, he will be paid because the payment will be triggered and the payment will be done instantly because that has been in the contract, in the coded form. So he doesn't have to wait for the client or apply for payment or follow up payment. No, it has to be automatically triggered and it's going to be paid instantly if that has been embedded in the contract. So this is the coded form I was, although it's, sorry, it's not so clear, but this is the uh, for us, uh, the, the, how it looked like. We are not in computer class, so I may not want to go into this. So these are some of the features of the smart contract. It is uh, in coded form, and the contractor clause are embedded in code. Performance mediated by technological means, meaning 
it is triggered automatically once the, those conditions have been fulfilled. Uh, we cannot stop it halfway. Let's say I have uh, gone to the vending machine, I have selected the drink, then I have dropped the coin, then I want to stop the contract. Usually it's not possible. It will have to be executed as it's supposed to do. So these are some of the features of a smart contract. Now this is the vending machine I was uh, looking for earlier. So it is irrevocable because the money I drop in will be retained. And of course, I would still get my dream because that is the agreement. Drop the money, no, select the drink, drop the exact money. If the money is not sufficient, the condition have not been met. So I will not get the drink. So once I have dropped in the exact money, press, the drink will come. So this is a typical example of a smart contract. So money cannot be returned when the drink is uh, supplied. Meaning, okay, uh, maybe after a few minutes, I've changed my mind, I'm no longer interested in the drink. This is not possible in the smart contract. So these are some of the applications of smart contract in terms of uh, various industry. So we correlate all this into construction project transportation is linked to construction project, financial institution, the banks, uh, property, uh, insurance company. So somehow all these are linked to construction company, uh, industry also. Now, the discussion that is ongoing regarding smart contract is whether it is binding legal or not. This is still on and depending on the countries, some countries are looking at how this is going to be legalized, meaning once you have a smart contract, you can uh, take action for non-compliance. So benefit of a blockchain into project management, we, we will have transparency because information, as long as it has been decided to be broadcasted, is transparent. Everybody have a same piece of information. Uh, in terms of uh, efficiency, of course, because looking at uh, risk management, risk management aspect, uh, once those risks have been identified and there's collective effort in addressing or responding those issues or potential risk, I think uh, there's going to be high level of efficiency, security of information, of course, automation in terms of smart contract. So payment will be automated. Contractor don't need to follow up uh, asking for payment, begging for payment. Once this is embedded in smart contract, as long as he fulfills the requirement of the contract, he's going to be automatically paid. Because the banks are in the network. So because the banks are in the network, once the condition is made, the payment will be from the bank to the contractor. These are also some of the benefits we can derive by application of uh, blockchain into or embedding blockchain into our construction uh, projects. So this is the link. I'm going to stop sharing this and share the features of the blockchain. Allow me a few seconds, please. Sure. It's a blank screen, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can you can click. We start with this hash. So the data or information. So this is the full length of hash. You can see it's, uh, similar to what we saw in the introductory part. Combination of alphabet and words. So the data information or transaction will be key in here. 
Now, this is just to show the hash. Now, let's look at a complete block. A complete block will have the block number, the nodes, the data, and the hash. For this, it's called a number only used once. So this number can only be used once on a blockchain. And usually miners uh, will be trying to solve and generate this number during the puzzle exercise. So this is a block, complete block. Now let's look at blockchain. You can see this consists of numbers of blocks. This is block one. This is block two. This is block three. Now, I did mention that the information in block one, which is Genesis block, will be in block two. Let's see how that happens. You, if, you, if you look at this, this start with, or it ends with CBB, right? In block two, can you see the same hash? Yeah. yeah. So and I did mention that the hash is connected to the content of the information or message or transaction. So if you delete any alphabet in the content of information, this hash will also change. So now in block two, we have the hash of block one and the hash of block two. So the information of block one and the new information appended to block two. Let's move on. So this is block two and three. So previous hash, the hash of block two finished with four F five. You can see it in block three, four F five. So meaning the information in block two, which by extension also contain block one, is in block three. So this is how it is tempered free. If for any reason, any person is able to temper with uh, the information in block one, it will reflect, when I say it will reflect, it will be, uh, it will be easily be detected in block two and block three. So this is how the information or the connectivity between the various blocks in the network. So remember in the definition of token, it is a unit of possession that can be transferred from one person to another. So whether you are looking at currency or any commodity. So in this block one, the transaction is about money, currency, uh, $25, 4.7 from who to who. So this is the token. This unit of transaction is referred as the token. The same principle also applies. The content or information, why we have 000 in block one, because it is Genesis block. It doesn't have previous block, but the hash in block one is going to be in block two, meaning the information or transaction, all these transaction of block one are also embedded in block two. So that is how blocks are connected. Uh, Dr. Kamaradi, I yes. want to ask a question. In this, in the concept of blockchain, is it possible to define some restrictions for example, we want to broadcast some of the information in block B with block C and some not. Is it possible or? It's uh, not possible. It's not, not possible. Mm -hmm. rather, rather, we have to decide which information is to be broadcasted and which one is not. Okay, I see. So, this also is looking at the concept of peer-to-peer. Meaning, if I am node number one or node A and Dr. Amir is node B, you can see while I'm having 
block one, two, three, four, and to the last one, Dr. Amir also have the same set of blocks. So meaning we are having the same piece of information and the same number of blocks. So we are see the same thing. Meaning node C will have the same set of information until the last person in the network. So these are the, some of the features I intend to show. At least we have a glimpse of how the content of a block look like. And I think this is all I, I have for us today. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kamaruddin, for the informative and comprehensive explanations on uh, blockchain technology and its application in construction projects. Now I would like to ask uh, to open the session for the students. If you've got any question, please feel free to ask. You might also want to contribute, please. Sorry? Yeah, uh, perhaps some of the students might want to contribute yeah, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have this anything is, to share, if you have any experience here, please share with us. If you've got any confusion, if you want to ask anything, please ask Dr. Kamaradi. Anyone? When there is no question, I'm not sure whether you understood very well or uh you understood nothing so please <laughs> no uh they okay let's, yeah. let's let's have this okay on one side let me probably i need to summarize on one side we have blockchain mm -hmm. and uh, let's look back at the feature of this blockchain on another hand we have our usual project team surrounded by the players in the in the project so we are trying to look at how the blockchain will fit in into this way we used to uh, perform or we used to execute projects we are familiar with issues facing the construction industry do we want to talk of time overrun or cost overrun or, or in, uh, inefficiency or uh, lack of innovation. Now we are trying to look at how blockchain fits in, not only fits in, but enhance the productivity, the efficiency of the industry. But now we are focusing on the project management. So this is what we are looking at this afternoon. Thank you very much. We got one question from Tibrani. Uh, it's mentioning is SAP a blockchain application? I'm not sure what SAP stands for. Devrani, can you let us know what do you mean by this? Um, SAP system is a, it's a very uh, powerful, I don't know how to explain it, but um, it's a system that we use to do procurement, is the system that we, use, we do to do logistic it has a lot of thing inventory so um uh, the way that uh, you explain this uh, the the concept of blockchain is more like the the fundamental of what blockchain is about so i'm thinking about maybe uh, sap system if you are familiar with it uh, is an application for of of of, of blockchain technology Okay, thank you very much for your question. Uh, to be honest, I'm not familiar with it, but we can answer this collectively, me and you. Now, to do that, the first criteria, does it record transactions? Yes. It does, right? Correct. Now, in terms of uh, network, are all members of the network connected? Yes. So the same piece of information can be broadcasted to all the members in the network. It can be viewed, it can be selective. If a use, the user um, want to make it private, they, they are able to do that as well. But in blockchain, uh, once, once the miner have uh, 
sent the information for verification and it has been verified, of course, it has to be broadcast, uh, appended into the blockchain. So there's no selection. The selection will be before, in the context of project management, before the transaction commences, which information we or which record we want to broadcast or save into, into the blockchain. Then are there issue of, uh, okay, how does security issue being managed? If you are being granted an access, then only you can uh, go to that system and, and view. So even though we have multiple uh, system or multiple subsystem in that SAP, if I if you were to be my supplier, for example, um, I can only allow you uh, to access certain um, uh, point or certain certain area in my environment. No, that is restriction in terms of restriction. No, security wise, I'm looking at uh, how do we ensure number one, this is the valid information coming in, uh, how do we ensure there's no fraudulence, no, no, nobody can uh, uh, amend this piece of information. Okay. This is, uh, I, I'm not sure about um, the system, how it works, but... Now you can see the, the, on the screen is the connected uh, number of blocks. So it's not possible to erase or delete or modify any piece of information in this block. Correct, yes. Thank you. So we might use that to decide where it, whether it is a blockchain or not. Okay. Did I respond to your question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me ask another question. Uh, Dr. Kamaruddin, uh, when was this blockchain technology first introduced to construction industry? Do you know that? I'm not aware. Is it of very new? Is it very new technology to construction or no? You know, I'm asking because uh, this technology is similar to other technologies. There are many barriers hindering its adoption into our practices. Now I want to know how the status of this technology is in how the status of it, its adoption in construction projects. Adoption is is really at the infant, really at because not even construction. Be uh, before even construction, the technology itself across the other uh, industry is still at the infant stage. Not to talk of construction industry. Okay. The technology has been there for long, mm -hmm. but the awareness is not really there. It is until recent, the awareness is uh, much more compared to uh, previous times. So construction is still looking at how do we go into this? Into okay. this uh, uh, is there any country that currently practicing this technology in construction projects? Uh, yes. Know? Yes, because yeah, advanced countries are in because of the smart contract. Mm -hmm. It is because of the smart contract which uh, triggered the concern. There are a number of countries, but I did not include into in the in this slide. But most of these advanced countries, Australia, US, mm -hmm. specifically, may, it might not be uh, the blockchain as it, but the smart contract aspect of uh, blockchain. Okay, so probably in the next years or decades, other countries uh, adopt this technology. Uh, now let me read another question for you, Dr. Kamaruddin. Uh, Arif is writing, uh, I have a question. It's about the understanding concept of blockchain in project management. My question is actually about the miner and the node. Supposedly, a project manager is the miner by establishing digital documents to the blockchain system. Then who will be the nodes of it? I'm still quite unclear about the understanding of miner and node. Thank you for that question. Now, a project manager can be a node because they are participant in the network. The notes refers to all the participants. Okay, I have mentioned that CIDB, for example, will be a node. If USM is the client, would be a node. Uh, uh, the contractor company would be a node. 
insurance company will be a node, the bank will be a node. Beyond that, there will be specific individual that will be mining the block, meaning appending the information into the block. Then after, and that will be after consensus of the miners and the nodes. Did I answer your question, please? So right. the difference is, the difference is the, the nodes are participant, meaning they participate in the consensus, they participate in ensuring the information coming in is valid, but the miners, the miners are responsible for uh, appending the information, mining the block, meaning I won't say developing the block, I won't say producing the block, appending the information coming in into the block and connecting the existing, the new block into the existing blocks. So their function is, can be summarized into two for the, for the miners. One, they ensure there is no fraud. They ensure that the information coming in is genuine and they are responsible for including the information into the block. Um, so basically for the nodes is, uh, it's actually like a receiver which, which is also validating the digital documents from the miner, is it? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay. So yes, then my, uh, my question is already answered. Thank you, Dr. Kamarupi. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Let's see the next question. Uh, doctor, the example being shown is a financial transaction. Is this technology only used for financial transactions or can it be used to transact other kinds of information as well? If yes, do you mind sharing any example for us? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, for Bitcoin, blockchain is specifically meant for financial transaction. Now, there are other types of blockchain. Example is Ethereum blockchain. We can use it beyond financial transaction. Example, now for citizenship uh, identification, like my card, for example, in Malaysia, my card. So blockchain will help greatly if my card is integrated or uh, blockchain technology is used in my card. This is one. Secondly, uh, that is for financial, sorry, for identification. Looking at the bank, banking industry, or looking at, okay, let me use this example. Have any of us missed a flight, specifically here you shall before? If yes, the experience usually is very painful, really painful. So, in the blockchain environment, once a flight is rescheduled, rescheduled, not meaning it's not the fault of the passenger, it was rescheduled for any reason. Now, if it is embedded in the smart contract that once once a flight is rescheduled, the company or Air Asia should reimburse the customer. You don't need, once it has been rescheduled, you don't need to go to any office. Automatically, automatically, your payment will be triggered and you'll be paid instantly. Re -refund, you will be refunded instantly because that has been embedded in the smart contract that once a flight is rescheduled and it is as a result of specific reason from the company, from the Air Asia side or the, the uh, flight operator side, then you'll be paid instantly. Okay, did I... we had your answer. Okay, Thiru Balan. Yeah, uh, okay, thanks, Doctor. Okay, great. Now we've got another question from Nurul. Is it possible to remove a block from the chain? And if it is, would that disrupt the flow of information or automatically create a new set of blockchain? So removing blockchain in practice is not done. The reason is 
That is why there is a process of validation and consensus mechanism. It may take it may take some time to ensure that this piece of information is really valid before it is appended. Once it is appended, it cannot be removed. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other question? You can unmute and you can ask your question or you can write in our chat box. Anyone has any question? OK, if there is no more questions, uh, once again, I would like to thank Dr. Kamardin for joining us today and sharing uh, your knowledge on adopting uh, blockchain technology. OK, we've got one more question <laughs> before ending the session. Uh, in construction project management, is it blockchain? We use any specific software? Are we using any specific software for uh, adopting blockchain construction management? We only use, okay, in terms of technology, we use digital uh, ledger technology, sorry, distributed ledger technology, technology that enables sharing of information across the network at the same time. In terms of uh, software, there are only programming so far, programming languages that is needed for coding the smart contract. So we have solidity for Ethereum uh, blockchain to be specific. Okay. The software refers to artificial intelligence. You need uh, software for artificial intelligence. But as far as uh, blockchain, to my, to my knowledge, you only need algorithm, meaning uh, programming. Unless, okay. unless we want to translate programming as a software. Okay, thank you very much. We've got. But this more. is. Yeah, I understand. Okay, okay, thank you. We've got more questions. Uh, I think this one already answered. What are the potential usage of blockchain in project management? I think I'd like to cover okay, the uh, answer, but if you have it, any more the to potential share. application, okay. If we look specifically into the knowledge areas, we'll be able to identify in specific how does blockchain will enhance uh, uh, project management. How how does it enhance, uh, for example, into project integration? I did I did mention of uh, change. In every project, there's potential need for some changes. And if all net, so all the nodes in the network are aware of the changes, I think it will be beneficial because knowing fully the need for change, when should be the change, how the change will be, and the cost implication of the change will enable everybody to be conversant and agree on the change that is uh, suggested, for example. Looking at risk management, you might be looking at communication uh, dissemination of information. Rather than sending email of reports every month, you could just send it through blockchain. And one important thing is, compared to sending report through emails, you can trace back every piece of information in chronological order. So there is a lot of potential of uh, its application. If we, uh, if the construction industry is really ready to adopt this technology, so okay. thank you very much. And I think there are about three slides that look at the benefits. So we could look at that from a specific of the advantages of looking. There are, I think, three slides specifically looking at the benefit we can derive from implementing this technology. I will be sharing your slides after the session with all the students in our e-learn. Okay, uh, we've got two more questions. Are documents sent through email considered as an application of blockchain also? No. Okay, would okay. you like to explain why it's not? 
why is not because that is uh, that is artificial intelligence, not blockchain. And one aspect, sorry, I because of this question, I'm going to another topic. Mail. Uh, we know there's a folder called spam in the email. The system of selecting or sending email to that folder is triggered by artificial intelligence. It's not blockchain. Okay, thank you very much. We got one question from Russia. Uh, is LC consider as part of smart contract in construction? I'm not sure what LC stand for. And can LC use for paying the construction cost or only for procure materials? Uh, Russia, can you let us know about what uh, LC stands for? Letter of credit. Is letter of credit considered as part of a smart contract in construction? Okay, okay, okay. Letter of credit, no, this is in shipping during procurement. In shipping, there's a letter that will explain the quantity of the goods that is to be shipped. So, and it is about uh, issue of payment. So, it is within the procurement uh, process. We we will not consider that as uh, part of the. But in the, uh, it's refers. It is used in procurement process. Why we want to ship, import, or export a, a good or product. So it is issued between the company that is going to ship the product and the shipping company. Okay, I hope you got your answer, Russia. Mm, is there any else question? Okay, thank you. Yeah, she got uh, her answer. Anyone else has any question before we end the session? Okay, one more. Uh, is accounting software an example of blockchain? Since it connects with suppliers, clients, auditors, hence are this software considered blockchain, even though they are flaws in security or etc. Soft software is a software that enables a process to be efficient, of course, but Looking at the concept of blockchain, we can consider uh, that software as a blockchain. Why? Because this is about network. This is about uh, a specific process of I mean, uh, embedding uh, information into the network. This is our process of verification of information, and this is about connecting existing block or new block to existing block. So the process, looking at the whole process, I think we, we can call, uh, we can consider a software as a blockchain. Thank you very much. Any more questions? If it's difficult to type a lot, you can just unmute and uh, talk and ask your question. Okay, let's wait for a couple of seconds to see if any more questions come in. Okay, Nuru saying noted. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Okay, so let's end our session once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamaruddin, for delivering a very interesting lecture on blockchain technology and its application in project management. And thank you everyone for attending our class. Uh, we'll see you next week and thank you, Dr. Kamaradin. Have a good thank evening. You, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
And apology for any deficiency, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, no, no worries, Dr. Kamardin. We learned a lot from uh, what you shared with us today. It was very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will share the link of our recording with you later. See you again, Dr. Amir. Thank you. See you. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Kamardin. Thank you, Dr. Amir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.